Thanks for joining me again as we look back at another great classic film. This is a film from someone considered by many as the world's best director and has been widely considered as one of the best films he ever made. It stars a legendary Scandinavian actor in his last film role and takes an innovative approach to filmic storytelling. It is Wald Strawberries from 1957. The idea for the film came to writer-director Igmar Bergman when he stopped in his hometown of Uppsala during a road trip from Stockholm to Dalarna. Reflecting on his past, Bergman was struck by the idea of being able to open one door and see things as they were during your childhood, and then opening subsequent doors that take you to other periods in your life. The original Swedish title, title is Smolot Stralet, uh, which literally means the wild strawberry patch, but symbolises a hidden place of sentimental value that is not widely known. Bergman wrote the screenplay while recovering from recurrent gastric problems and general stress in Karolinska Hospital. At the time, his career was at a high point, but his private life was in disarray. His third marriage and his extramarital affair with Bibi Anderson were falling apart, uh, and his relationship with his parents was at, a, was at an all-time low. Bergman wrote the movie with, with his idol 78-year-old Victor Sostrom in mind, and while Sostrom was at initially reluctant due to his advanced age, following a discussion with Bergman he agreed to take the part on the condition that he could return home for a whiskey at 5pm every day. As always Bergman chose his actors and technicians because he had worked with them before in the cinema or in the theatre and or in the theatre. This includes Bergman regular, regulars Bibi Anderson, uh, Ingrid Thulin, uh, Gunnar Bjornstrand uh, and Max von Sydow who appears in a very small role. Shooting took place between July and August of 1957, with scenes filmed in the resort town of Salzjabaden uh, and the old part of central Stockholm, with most of the movie shot at, at uh, SF's studio and on its back lot at Resunda in northern Stockholm. Several scenes had to be shot indoors due to Victor Sostrom's poor health, necessitating the use of some back projection in scenes shot in the car. Sostrom's health was a concern as he was in all but one scene of the film. Initially he had problems with his lines, which made him frustrated and angry, driving him to go off into a corner and beat his head against the wall, to the point of drawing blood and producing bruises. He sometimes quibbled over small details in the script as well. To unburden him, Bergman made a pact with Ingrid Thulin, who plays Marianne, uh, that if anything went wrong during a scene, she would take the blame. Sostrom got along particularly well with Bibi Anderson, uh, who played both Borg's childhood sweetheart, who left him to marry his brother, and a charming, energetic young woman, who reminds him of that lost love. Anderson at the time was 21 and a member of Bergman's repertory company. She had already played small parts in Smiles of a Summer Night and The Seventh Seal. Bergman's first wife, Elsa Fischer, uh, made a brief uncredited appearance as Borg's mother in the final flashback, with their daughter Lena playing one of Isaac's twin sisters. While Strawberries received strongly positive reviews in Sweden for its acting, script and photography, it was amongst the films that cemented Bergman's international reputation, but American critics were at times puzzled by it. Bosley Crowther lauded the performance of Sostrom and Anderson, but writes that the film was so thoroughly mystifying that we wonder whether Mr. Bergman himself knew what he was trying to say. The film ranked seventh on Cahiers de Cinema's top ten films of 1959. It won the Golden Bear and the Fipressi Prize at the 8th Berlin International Film Festival, and won a Golden Globe for Best Foreign Film in 1960. It was nominated for a BAFTA Award for the Best Film, uh, and was nominated for an Academy Award for Original Screenplay, but Bergman rejected the nomination. It won a Passanetti Award at the 1958 Venice Film Festival, and won the Bodil Award for Best European Film in 1959, and the Nastro di uh, for Best Non-Italian Film in 1960. Stanley Kubrick has listed the film as his second favourite of all time, and Russian filmmaker Andrei Tarkovsky uh, as one of his top ten favourite films. Derek Malcolm ranked the film at 56 in his top 100 movies, and Guardian Readers ranked it at number 34 of their 40 greatest foreign films of all time. Japanese film Kinema Junpo uh, ranked it at number 59 of their top 100 non-Japanese films of all time. In 1972 it was ranked 10th, and by 2022 it slid to equal 108th on the Sight and Sound uh, Critics Poll of the greatest films ever made. It was voted at number 11 of the 25 best Swedish films of all time by a poll of 50 film critics and academics conducted by film magazine FLM. Its screenplay was listed uh, by Total Film as one of the 50 best ever written. The film was included in the BBC's 2018 list of the 100 greatest foreign language films. 
while strawberries received wide positive domestic reception upon release uh, and is often considered Bergman's greatest and most moving film and one of the greatest films ever made. Wild Strawberries inspired Sachit Ray's 1966 film uh, Nayak uh, and had a clear influence on Woody Allen's Stardust Memories, Another Woman, Crimes and Misdemeanors and Deconstructing Harry. In 1966, a 91-minute German-speaking radio program adapted from the film uh, was aired in West Germany and Austria. It is included amongst the 1001 movies you must see before you die. It's ranked 89th uh, amongst the best non-English speaking films in the BBC's critics poll. Lots of good reasons to watch this film. It is an intriguing premise and deceptively simple story uh, that draws you in deeply in a gentle but reflective way. Sostrom is brilliant uh, despite the challenges of his advancing age, and like all Bergman films, it benefits from an ensemble cast who works seamlessly due to how often they have worked together in the past. So what I suggest you do is that you go to our website, find our virtual screenings page, find the link to this particular film, click it and watch it, as always, see what you think. We'd love you to come back, share your thoughts with others about the film, uh, and let us know whether you'd recommend it for them as well. And then we're back in the not-too-distant future for our next classic films review. Catch you next time.